Welcome to part two of how I modeled Tom Nook. When I started recording myself making this model, my original goal was to create a Tom Nook that resembled my reference. But at this point, I decided I wanted to make him look more like the new Tom Nook, so that's what we're going to do today. All right, so I'm gonna start by making the shirt collar. I found this picture of Tom Nook online somewhere. It's not the best reference, but it'll work. Just select any vertex, shift D to duplicate, and P to separate by selection. This turns our vertex into a new object. Make sure you're selected on the new object and remove any modifiers you don't want. So, turn off proportional editing and hit extrude to make a couple of edges in line with his shirt collar. Enable snapping up here. I'm going to hide his head object. So in the snapping menu, select snap to face. Now go back and grab each vertex and reposition it. This should snap its location to the face behind it. Now, let's keep shaping the collar. Let's make the other side now. Play around with the positioning of stuff till you like it. I'm going to add an extra vertex on each side over here. So I do that by selecting one vertex, hitting Ctrl B to bevel, and then hitting V to enable beveling on individual vertices. Then drag your mouse a little bit. I'm gonna add some faces in here. Turn off snapping and drag the tips of the collar on the Y axis to get them away from his shirt. I'm just gonna turn these into triangles and add a solidify modifier. I suspect the normals are facing the wrong direction on one of the sides, so I'm going to recalculate the normals. And then, adjust the thickness a little bit. I'm going to remove this solidify modifier because I'm indecisive. I'm also going to move this whole thing away from his body a little bit. Now with everything selected, hit E and extrude it into his body a little bit. Now, I want to tuck this side of the collar under the other side. We're going to need to add a few more vertices to get this shaped nicely using edge loops and J to join vertices as we go. I'm going to select these vertices and slide them along the Y axis to get his collar out of his chest. I'm going to use the knife tool and turn off occlude geometry and just make cuts wherever I need them. Alt select this edge loop and slide it along the Y axis. I move everything along the Y axis to keep it lined up with my reference. Make sure while you are using the knife tool, you select all the faces you want to cut through. I usually do that by selecting one vertex and hitting Ctrl L to select all linked vertices. I find it easiest to use the knife tool in wireframe view, and I just willy nilly cut the collar so that I can get a decent curve on its geometry. And I don't like how this curves in, so I'm just going to reposition this vertex a little bit. And this one. So, at this point, I'm attempting to snap the inner vertices to his chest. But I'm dumb and have project onto self-selected in the snapping menu. And didn't notice for a while. So you'll see me do some stuff here that I'll have to fix shortly. All you do is select your vertex and hit G, and the program does the rest to place it directly on whichever face you want to, depending on how you have your snapping set up. I'm going to use a subdivision modifier to make this look better. And I want the tips of his shirt to still be sharp, so I'm going to put little cuts at the tip. So this is where I realize I messed up on the snapping. I turn off project onto self, and attempt to find all the wrongly placed vertices and get them where I want them. Hopefully you were prepared ahead of time and got this result to begin with. I think it looks pretty good. And now I put in some edge loops like a crazy person. I want to tuck this end a little better 
So just move it slightly. It looks more or less like a collar to me. Although he is showing a bit more chest than I think he does in the game. I want to select these faces back here and extrude out a bit more of the collar, in case I decide to move his head around a bit. I want to make his shirt hang a bit, so in Vertex Select, hold Alt and click an edge in between two vertices in the loop you want to select. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate the loop, and with it selected, hit P to separate by selection. This will turn our loop into a new object. Now is a good time to name our new object so we don't get confused later. And I guess I don't know what to call this yet, so Body2 works for now. With your mouse hovering over the viewport, hit E to extrude, and then drag it down on the Z axis. Now go back into the main body object and select everything under this area. And with that selected, I'm going to hit P and separate by selection to make this into a new object as well. I'm going to call it legs. Now I'm going to take body and body2, hit Ctrl J to join them into one object. Hit A to select all, Alt M to merge vertices by distance, which will join these two meshes back up. The shading and normals are wrong, so, Alt-N to recalculate normals, and under the face menu, select Smooth Shading. And now the tip of his legs stick out because of how subdivision works. There's plenty of solutions, but I'm just going to scale this down with clipping on and then move it towards the center. So I think this looks pretty good. Now let's put in a few edge loops. Scale in the middle one slightly, and this makes the shirt hem. Then, Alt select the bottom edge loop, extrude, and scale it slightly to give it a little depth. Good enough! So, let's select the legs and give them some pants. This edge loop looks like a good place to start. Select it, duplicate it. Scale it until it matches your reference, if you have one. It can be hard to decide where to put it, especially without solid reference. This looks okay for now. Extrude and pull it up on the Z axis. You could rotate the circle, but I'm going to just pull down the middle vertex with proportional editing and hide the bottom loop with H so that I don't mess it up. So basically, just make the pants at this point. I selected everything but the legs, duplicated it, Shift D, and used P to separate it by selection. Then join the two non-leg objects. You could select both edge loops and hit F3 to search for the bridge edge loops at this point. But I made all the faces manually, I merged my vertices, recalculated normals, smooth shaded, and then fixed the position of my vertices. Select the bottom loop, extrude it and scale it in a little bit to round the bottom. I'm placing an edge loop to make the bottom of his pants have some depth. Before you confirm the placement of the edge loop, you can hit E and then F to toggle which bordering edge loop has stronger sway over the placement. So now, select these faces, and with proportional editing off, extrude and scale them slightly. Put in one more edge loop to sharpen the crease here. Select the bottom edge loop and hit F to fill it in with an amazing N-Gon. If you really hate N-Gons, you can extrude this loop, scale, and merge vertices at center. I just found a picture of Tom Nook from the side and realized his pant legs are huge, so I'm going to reshape them a little bit until it more closely matches that picture. The new Tom Nook model has much more rounded feet than he used to, so I'm going to select this edge loop on his legs, hit X, and choose to dissolve edges. Now I'm going to try to make his toes. I can't find a good picture of his feet, so we'll just get something close. Select these four faces, and extrude them forward slightly. Adjust it to your liking. And good enough. Now let's do the sleeves like we did with the pants. Let's get a little bump to the edge, sharpen the crease. Seems like his body is clipping slightly through his pants. 
I'm going to copy this object and archive it in case I want to go back. And then on the original leg object, I'm going to delete everything occluded by the pants. When I think my model is close to done, I like to add some color to see if everything looks okay as is. So we'll go into the material tab over here, as we did with the lighting. With whatever object we want to add a material to selected, hit this little plus button to add another material slot. Click new, which will create a new material. Select all the faces you want to assign the material to and click assign. Now in material view, we can click this box to select our material base color. This is just a rough look, so no need to be too exact if you don't want to be. The body object is slightly different, since we want to use multiple materials. Select a vertex on the arm, hit Ctrl L to select all the linked vertices, add a new material slot, and create a new material for that slot. You can also name materials here to keep everything tidy. Choose a random orangey color, and with the arm mesh selected, hit Assign. Select the feet and hit this drop down arrow under the material tab and select our skin material. I'm going to slightly adjust the material's roughness. Do the same for the head and tail. So he sort of looks weird without the gradient, but we can see that it's coming along nicely. Save your work frequently. The couple of times Blender has crashed on me, it was because of an add-on, but it's good to always save frequently anyways. I don't like how low his collar is, because I'm very conservative, but if you prefer it this way, go ahead and skip this part. I'm going to line up my model's head and nose angle with the reference a little better. This reference is not an orthographic projection. It has perspective, so you can't line stuff up perfectly, but you can see that his collar indeed sits a little low. So I'm going to select the whole thing and slide it up to match the reference. Slide it back a bit on the Y axis and arduously move every vertex to try to get to match with the chest. Make sure to move everything mostly on the Y axis at this point. Just shift stuff around until you like how it looks. I'm just going to pull these inner vertices into his chest and I think this looks a little better. At this point feel free to take a nap if you need one. Tom's hands also look a bit rounder these days than they used to, so I'm going to alt select this entire edge loop and double tap G to slide around a bit, and then maybe scale down the face on his hand. Again, if you hate n-gons, you can easily divide this face into triangles. So that's pretty good I think. Adjust stuff as you see fit. I think I pulled up the back of the shirt with proportional editing so that it rests on the top of his tail, and added a shirt pocket, so feel free to change it however you want at this point. Maybe give him a sweet mohawk or something. In the next video, we'll cover texturing and rigging. Unless it gets too long, which we'll break it into a couple videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful. I'll see you next time. Stay safe. I love you. Bye.